Good morning, friends. Uh, it's a beautiful Saturday morning, and today we are going to start our uh, topic, uh, Strategical Saturday Part One, where uh, I'm going to start uh, the topic exchanges uh, and the color complex. So let's move directly to the topic. Here uh, we'll see the color complex, uh, the black point of view. Uh, okay, white has started with knight f3, knight f6 e3 g6 and b4 so uh, normally this is a very unique uh, line uh, which is not uh, that usual uh, but the point of b4 is um, uh, white just want to play bishop b2 and in future d4 and c4 want to extend uh, his pawns uh, towards the queen side uh, but the drawback of this b4 move is uh, white uh, has already weakened the squares uh, a3 and c3 partially uh, especially sorry uh, c3 and c4 partially and a3 and a4 is uh, fully weak uh, now after bishop g7 uh, bishop b2 and uh, say after uh, short castle bishop e2 uh, here is the first uh, point where uh, black need to start thinking uh, in a proper way uh, because the bishop jason castle is a very normal uh, way so normally i would advise the student uh, the moves which are necessary to play that you should play uh, so and keep the flexibility for other moves for example if you have decided uh, earlier about the d6 and d5 uh, then you will regret uh, maybe d5 is a better move so here in this case uh, it is very clear that white is going to play d4 c4 and a4 so this is the first point where we can start uh, with uh, some ideas and we just uh, introducing the color complex from here uh, yes uh, for example uh, here after d4 and c4 now that is the only pawn on a light square which is the c pawn so if you play d5 here uh, and whenever white goes for d4 and c4 and if you trade your d pawn with the c pawn then there is no other pawn on a light squares and if you are managed to exchange the light square bishop then you will reach the topic color complex so here uh, i played uh, d5 uh, so which is uh, uh, really uh, necessary if you want to achieve the color complex if you play d6 here you won't uh, achieve that so uh, i'm not saying that this is a bad move here uh, it's not like that but uh, d5 i have something in mind like uh, uh, this uh, color complex and uh, in future i want to trade uh, the light square bishop okay so i play d5 here now short castle and uh, uh, of course c4 and a4 is weak square so i have immediately played uh, nbd7 with the idea of knight b6 uh, and knight a4 another idea might be uh, c5 uh, or maybe rook uh, 8 and e5 so which is also possible and here my opponent played d4 and we are uh, directly going towards our topic because uh, after d4 now it is very clear that uh, white is going to play nbd7 and c4 uh, this is how the only way to eliminate his uh, backward pawn and uh, to gain space on uh, queen side so uh, here i played e5 because if i play knight b6 uh, then uh, definitely white is going to play a4 and won't allow my knight to uh, Knight uh, uh, f4. So it is better to start with a5 because now white has to decide. So this is what my another uh, recommendation that always pass the decision making process to opponent. Because if you play knight b6, then uh, white will automatically play a4 rather than a5. Uh, here it's uh, white who has to take the decision that white should play b5 or. Uh, uh, ba5 or a3 so of course ba5 is uh, uh, not at all uh, uh, in my consideration because which uh, creates more pawn island in uh, white scam so it is ideal to play uh, a5 here and uh, here uh, i would say that b5 is uh, more logical uh, as compared to a3 because uh, after b5 uh, anyhow i'm going to play knight b6 now still uh, knight a4 is a threat and if uh, white plays a4 uh, then uh, black will play knight e8 and uh, now my idea is to play knight d6 and knight to c4 because now c4 is weak and whenever white plays c4 then uh, we'll just trade everything on uh, c4 and uh, now black will have bishop pair so especially the light squares light squares are still weak in white scam so this is how 
uh, black can play in this position uh, but after a5 on move 7 white played a3 which i feel is the first uh, mistake uh, in uh, from white but okay uh, still uh, we have seen that even after b5 still black has a decent position uh, but after a3 uh, now black uh, white has no longer uh, the a4 possible and that's why uh, black should go to knight b6 uh, now knight a4 is a threat uh, okay so white continue with the normal uh, developing moon knight bd2 and c4 because if white goes for knight c3 okay he is stopping knight a4 but uh, in return his c4 square remains weak uh, and the c2 pawn remains backward pawn so which is of course not a good idea and that's why after nbd2 uh, white choose uh, the move nbd2 with the idea of uh, c4 now knight a4 and here black uh, uh, is threatening immediately to take on b2 so white has two ways to defend it uh, either with a queen c1 or the rook b1 so in game queen c1 was played but let's discuss first uh, the move uh, rb1 okay bishop c1 is uh, not at all um, possible because of just uh, knight c3 uh, queen e1 knight e2 and uh, just uh, ab4 wins upon so uh, bishop c1 is of course not at all uh, possible so let's say now rb1 now how to continue uh, so the question is uh, uh, is this bishop a uh, good bishop or not bishop uh, is a bad bishop because uh, the uh, the thing is uh, uh, white is going to play bishop a1 and c4 and if you take on c4 then um, I mean, if uh, the diagonal is already open and uh, white may play uh, d5 4 in future. Uh, but here, uh, according to me, uh, it's better to play a b4 first so that uh, white is not uh, going to play uh, b a5 and uh, open his uh, bishop anymore. So a b4 uh, takes and now c6. So make sure that uh, whenever c4 comes, white. Uh, uh, is trying to open his bishop but black is not going to take on c4 so which uh, simply keeps his bishop uh, uh, bad for the rest of the uh, time and uh, after say bishop a1 will just play b5 and now if you compare this position with uh, the Carlsberg structure where uh, black is uh, adopting the plan of b5 uh, which is uh, I mean really an achievement for uh, black because now black is going to play bishop f5 knight d7 knight b6 and knight c4 so uh, bishop f5 actually stops the idea of uh, e4 uh, which is a normal idea in calls but after b5 uh, but here uh, this is uh, of course and a better uh, a version of uh, Carlsberg. So okay, RB1 uh, on move number 10 is uh, not working and uh, my opponent played queen to c1. So uh, after queen c1 I played knight e4. Uh, now why knight e4? Because uh, because I am going to win bishop pair and if I have bishop pair it is ideal to open the position right so uh, I decided to play knight e4 and try to open the center because I am going to take on b2 in uh, upcoming moves and of course I am not in hurry to take on b2 because the bishop is not going anywhere and that's why I choose uh, knight e4 uh, here and uh, now if black goes for knight e4 I just play uh, d into e4 and knight d2 is made by e5 and now you really see that uh, black is simply succeed uh, in the strategy of uh, opening the center so after uh, uh, e5 if uh, white goes for uh, knight into e4 then black will simply play knight into b2 queen into b2 ed4 ed4 queen into d4 and uh, of course whenever you have bishop pair it is ideal to trade the queens uh, especially okay which are the topic of uh, bishop pair so which uh, we can um, uh, see in a different series but okay here this uh, queen into d4 and uh, after a uh, queen into d4 bishop into d4 center is already collapsed and uh, black uh, uh, has a bishop pair so for example say if queen into d4 bishop into d4 and uh, this position is of course slightly better for uh, black so uh, so after knight e4, knight e4, d e4, knight d2, e5, uh, another possible variation uh, is c3. But of course, d e5 is bad because of simply uh, knight into b2, queen into b2, and queen d2 wins a piece. And that's why here 
uh, c3 uh, is necessary but you see i mean c3 is so ugly because his bishop uh, is uh, very bad and uh, um, uh, black can just simply play rook e8 and just keeping the tension in the center because now there is no point of uh, reducing the tension with uh, d e5 which simply improves his bishop so uh, black can just play queen e8 and uh, uh, gradually improve his position okay so now let's see uh, instead of knight e4 on move number 11 uh, white plays c4 because which looks uh, very natural move and that's what played in uh, my game so after c4 uh, I still decided to uh, open the center and I started with the move knight into d2. Uh, now, here if black goes for knight into d2, then I can just simply play either c6 or bishop f5, and his bishop on b2 remains bad for the rest of the game. But here my opponent decided to uh, take it back with the queen because which looks very uh, normal uh, to connect the rooks uh, as early as possible and that's why he took with uh, queen and uh, now in order to open the center so still i'm just thinking about the bishop pair actually so uh, uh, you might think that okay topic is uh, color complex and we are talking about bishop pair but you'll see in, uh, you are going to see uh, this topic uh, uh, in uh, in few moves so after queen d2 uh, i played d into c4 so I am eliminating the first pawn, uh, the last pawn actually, oh, first or last we can say, because the only pawn which is on um, a light square. So I just took on uh, a c4, bishop to c4 and I played e5. Uh, so still I am uh, thinking on the same theme um, bishop pair uh, so far. Uh, and now uh, my idea is to play bishop g4 next move. So to take this knight and then take this bishop and win this d4 pawn. Uh, and if white goes for uh, say some moves like uh, queen c1 or something like this, we can just even uh, take on uh, b2 and take on d4. And uh, we have uh, this weakness uh, in black's camp. d4 pawn is remains weak and still white has bishop pair so uh, of course after queen d6 here black has a uh, slight advantage but okay in, instead of queen c1 uh, it looks natural to play rook f d1 because uh, uh, white wants to avoid this uh, isolated pawn on d4 and here black uh, 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 achieves his strategy okay so you can just pause the video and try to find out it uh, yourself how to continue as black okay so let's see so uh, now again we are just each uh, closer to the uh, our strategy color complex so here all the light squares are weakened which is ideal for uh, black to trade the light square bishop and that's where black start with the move bishop g4 uh, so now our strategy is to take on uh, f3 um, so that that immediate threat uh, forces white to play bishop e2 and now always remember that whenever uh, opponent has some weaknesses uh, there are two types of weaknesses either mobile or fixed so uh, normally we should uh, fix uh, some weaknesses in order to exploit it uh, in a very concrete way so here all the light squares are very, very weak and it is necessary to fix that weaknesses so i started with the move e4 and again by playing this uh, move actually we are following the capablanca's rule okay so what that rule is i'm just going to explain to you so after e4 uh, it is forced for white to move this knight and uh, okay in game 91 was played uh, but i think 95 is of course a better idea but still after uh, bishop into e2 queen into e2 and queen d5 and now you see this is uh, how we have achieved uh, the color complex and now our strategy is to take a into b4 uh, again we are uh, uh, not allowing a uh, white to take uh, b into a4 in upcoming moves and after a b4 a b4 just b5 and then in future we can just uh, uh, transfer our knight either on uh, c4 or uh, d5 uh, but the another uh, problem might be this e5 pawn is weak and that's why my opponent okay after say bishop into e5 and uh, 
for example like b2 bishop e5 rook e8 okay so maybe we can just start with the uh, rook e8 in future and then take on b2 take on e5 and uh, this e5 pawn remains weak for the rest of the game so uh, maybe my opponent is uh, maybe afraid about this but i would say okay does not matter you are losing a pawn or what just by uh, instead of playing knight e1 is better to keep uh, your pieces active and uh, better to play with the pawn down rather than uh, two passive bad pieces uh, okay so here uh, let's uh, go to the moon knight e1 and now after bishop into e2 queen into e2 and now queen d5 uh, okay so here uh, you may argue that you can start with the move a b4 a b4 and b5 as well uh, because uh, white uh, cannot take on b5 because the b2 bishop is uh, bad so a b4 a b4 b5 is also good uh, but okay i started with the move queen d5 and uh, now let's discuss uh, what the Capablanca's rule is. Okay, so Capablanca's rule one is uh, if you have, uh, for example, the light square bishop, it is better to put your pawns on uh, uh, dark squares. Uh, that means your bishop and pawn should be an opposite color. Uh, the Capablanca's rule two is if your opponent has. Uh, the light square bishop uh, you should keep your pawns on the light square okay so keep the pawns on the same color of your opponent bishop and the rule three is if uh, both have the same color bishop uh, follow the rule number one that means if you both here both have the uh, uh, dark square bishop it is ideal to put the pawns on a light squares so for example here uh, both have the light square uh, both have the dark square bishop and that's why i fixed my pawns on a uh, light squares so that i can easily uh, exploit the weakness of the light squares and uh, this is what we can say uh, the topic color complex is so now uh, in the rest of the game all the light square remains weak and i can easily exploit this uh, uh, by just exchanging the queen. Uh, so always remember how to play when you have such position. Uh, always remember a uh, few uh, fundamentals. Whenever you have the color complex, uh, try to keep uh, one piece bad. For example, here uh, the light dark square bishop is bad, and so I would advise to trade the queens first because queen is the only piece which can generate counterplay. So trade the queens first of all. Uh, another rule of thumb that you should remember is uh, one bad exchange wrist. So if opponent has one bad piece, try to exchange the rest of the pieces in order to exploit that uh, worst piece in his game. And whenever the color complex is, you should remember one more thing that uh, end game is always favorable for you because your king is the most dangerous piece in the end game because uh, no one is going to stop your king uh, to march uh, through the light squares for example if the end game comes here uh, if you eliminate all the major pieces from here for example queen and both rooks and if you just play f5 and if you march with your king with king f7 king e6 king d5 king c4 king d3 you are just going to win uh, straight away so uh, what is the strategy now onwards and how we have achieved so uh, this topic is uh, much more important how you have achieved this so actually the color complex uh, uh, we have introduced on move number 4 uh, with the move d5 and then we traded that bishop uh, successfully and then we achieved this position so the rest of the part is not easy but although i'm going to show it uh, uh, but uh, the main point is how you achieved this right so after queen d5 just uh, black's task is to trade the queens and major pieces right so after queen d5 my opponent played uh, queen c2 and i played b5 uh, so again uh, just uh, uh, make sure that uh, uh, white is not going to take on uh, c son because the b2 bishop is hanging and i'm just increasing some pressure on uh, light squares so fixing the pawns so uh, maybe we can just start with uh, uh, knight b6 and knight c4 in future or maybe knight b6 knight d5 after moving the queen but i uh, in order to do, do this always remember that uh, d5 move should not be possible uh, uh, should not be played by white we don't want to allow him to play d4 because we uh, don't want a pawn, we just want this two bad pieces in uh, a white scam. Okay, so now uh, white played rook db1, which looks very strange to me. Although uh, it's difficult to suggest any kind of uh, improvement, uh, but uh, my opponent's plan is to play bishop c1 and queen a2, which is straight away, uh, mm, of course, bad because we always know that uh, this is good for. Uh, black okay now i just took on uh, b4 i don't want to allow ba4 so we can um, 
I just start with move a b4 a b4 and now i played a5 putting my another pawn on a light square and uh, i may play uh, f4 in future as well so my opponent played g3 so his idea is to play knight g2 and knight f4 uh, so here i played the move rook f c8 uh, Okay, so here, uh, if I play knight b6, then my opponent play uh, may play rook into uh, 8, rook into 8, and uh, maybe queen c5 or queen c7. So, which I uh, don't like. So, I what I did, I just play rook fc8. Actually, I'm not afraiding about the queen to c7, but I'm just afraiding about the queen c5 uh, when I just want to play knight b6. So knight b6 actually allows queen c5 and that's why I played rook fc8 in order to uh, vacate the square uh, f8 for my bishop uh, so that uh, <coughs> white is not going to play queen c5. I just play bishop f8 and bishop d6. So always remember that if whenever you are playing your pieces on a, a first rank or the second rank it is uh, the concept of uh, maneuvering. So here uh, my idea is to play bishop f8 and bishop d6. Uh, so seeking for a maneuvering and uh, after knight g2 so my opponent's idea is to play knight f4 so he has two bad pieces and of course i'm not going to allow him uh, that move because which simply uh, gives over the grip on d5 uh, on the light square so i just played g5 bishop c1 and uh, here i just continue with I, I may continue with my plan with the bishop f8 uh, but okay i played uh, a slightly dubious move with the rook a6 uh, my idea is uh, clear i just want to uh, take a more grip on c4 but it looks more natural to play bishop f8 of course so i played uh, rook a6 and my opponent played uh, queen a2 straight away uh, exchange the queen and of course which is good for us uh, here it is uh, uh, of course very ideal take on uh, a2 rook into a2 rook c6 bishop d2 and king f7 of course straight away we are just marching towards the weak squares uh, weak light squares and whenever the rook c1 comes we can just take stakes and play knight c3 rook d2 and knight d5 and this is of course straight away winning because now we are going to play king uh, e6 c6 knight b6 knight c4 king d5 and whenever the h4 comes we'll just play h6 uh, but here is after c6 uh, actually i'm just played uh, a psychological game because see my opponent played rook f b1 then bishop c1 and then queen a2 just in order to exchange the queen so i thought okay if my opponent has wasted so many moves to just exchange the queen so uh, let's play the move c6 uh, so of course uh, again remember that uh, queen into a2 uh, is of course our strategy uh, but when opponent is wasting so many moves uh, i thought okay let me play some uh, psychological game so i played c6 and of course queen d5 improves my grip on uh, light square so of course which is not advisable and so my opponent played bishop d2 and uh, still queen a2 is uh, better choice but i continue with the move bishop f8 and now my opponent simply moves the queen to c2 and i thought oh again how to uh, uh, work for actually the queens so always remember that queen a2 was a better idea but i thought uh, just about the psychological aspects okay and then i played uh, my rook a8 back queen d1 h6 so whenever the uh, move uh, queen h5 comes i have uh, the move queen h7 again um, uh, okay so in this this position is uh, actually uh, i mean so much harmless for black that uh, black can waste uh, the enough tempos actually yeah, i mean there is nothing uh, nothing is going to happen here uh, nothing is going to uh, change the evolution so okay uh, after h4 i played just king g7 queen h5 uh, and again i offer a queen trade here with the queen f7 okay now my opponent played queen d1 back because now he understood that uh, queen exchanges is uh, of course in my favor now i played bishop e7 so i just uh, simply want to keep my queen free now my opponent played uh, f3 and i put uh, queen h5 so uh, maybe i can just continue with the move queen e6 as well which is also good enough my opponent played queen h5 and now he played g4 just takes takes and uh, queen e6 back queen g6 back now queen e2 and i put my queen back to uh, e6 and my opponent now played rook f1 and again uh, we know that uh, our strategy is to exchange the major pieces uh, so I played rook f8 
now my opponent played rook c1 because I have the only weakness on c6. Okay, so now I just took on uh, f1, rook into f1, and I played second rook on f8. So uh, now I think ideal is to play rook c1, but still after knight b6, rook a1, and knight d5, uh, I'm just going to win a pawn, and rook a7 is simply made by rook f3 followed by queen into g4, and my bishop is firmly protected with the knight on d5. So uh, I'm going to win uh, very soon. Uh, so rook c1 is of course. Uh, not going to help fight, but uh, still it is better to keep more pieces on the board because uh, rook f8 is again straight away uh, winning. So uh, my opponent chose rook into f8, I played bishop into f8 and uh, now you see still I have not uh, uh, gained any material, uh, but actually there is no need to take material when opponent is two bad pieces. If I am uh, just simply take this uh, d4 pawn away from the board, actually it only helps uh, white so uh, uh, I, I would recommend here as white just white should throw his uh, d pawn does not matter uh, is uh, losing his pawn still after d5 queen d5 black is winning but at least uh, white should throw that pawn uh, okay here my opponent played bishop e1 and i played bishop d6 of course not allowing my opponent to play bishop uh, to g3 and still i have total domination uh, on the all board and just now my idea is to maneuver my knight to d5 so my opponent played hg5, hg5 uh, and queen c2 uh, but uh, okay is queen c6 uh, a really threat because queen c6 simply made by bishop h2 and that's why uh, I simply uh, ignore the threat and I played knight b6 so now it is only ho hope for uh, white to bring his queen on uh, a file and that's why my opponent played queen b2 still i would recommend to play queen, uh, d5 but okay uh, anyhow i'm just uh, uh, going to win with uh, either we take with the queen d5 or uh, knight d5 and still it is winning for me uh, okay my opponent played queen b2 and now i just simply put my knight on uh, d5 now queen a3 and now this is the only small uh, little calculation for uh, black i just took on g4 queen is on check and bishop c7 so here still king g6 is also winning uh, but I chose uh, the move bishop to c7 queen b7 and now queen g3 so the point is uh, queen c6 is simply made by bishop h2 uh, now king f1 king f2 is uh, simply made by queen f3 made king f1 and now knight e3 check and king e2 and now queen into g2 and here my opponent resigned because uh, king e3 is simply made by bishop f4 mate so now uh, you can see that uh, this game was uh, really beautiful to understand the topic uh, color complex exchanging and the color complex so remember the thing that we have started with the more move four we introduced the color complex with the move four when we played d5 and then our intention is to exchange uh, one only one pawn which was on a uh, light square and then uh, our intention is to exchange the light square bishop so we have achieved uh, okay we have just finished this game on move number 48 uh, but actually uh, this game was uh, won on move number uh, uh, say here on move number 16 when my opponent played uh, knight uh, e1 and we achieved this uh, color complex so it took uh, 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 just execution part is uh, normally a bit lengthy but uh, normally it's winning right so uh, this kind of position never changed the evolution uh, anyhow if you are playing one or two bad moves uh, uh, still the position remains same so hope you have enjoyed this uh, first part on the exchanges and uh, I'm just going to take the second part on the next Saturday so if you have uh, enjoyed this uh, Please, uh, please wait for the second Saturday for the next topic and the next topic will be exchanges and the entry point. So hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you very much.